probably about two or three weeks ago, I felt the anointing of God come on me in a way that I never felt before. And it scared me. But it came at a time, it came at a time, and it's funny, it came at a time when I got frustrated with my job, with the system, how they do things, how they run things. And it came to a point, I asked myself, am I really making a difference? Am I really helping the way God wants me to help? We had, a, we had a meeting, and I was going on vacation to see my mom just to check on her. And we met with the director of my job and all the supervisors. And I got frustrated. And I, I started the meeting out with no disrespect, I'm laying out with my heart filled, and I gave them everything the way I felt. And at the end of what I said, I don't know if I'm coming back to work. God placed you at your job Amen. to glorify him Amen. and not yourself. Amen. And that's where I got caught up at. The enemy is slick now. And that's where I got caught up at. And he said, I place you there to do something nobody else can do. Amen. Amen. Whew. That changed my whole perspective about my job. Because I got caught up in trying to, trying to see the rewards. You get me? Right then. You want to see the rewards right then. Then Psalms 23 came into my mind and in my heart and in my spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Then I thought about the pandemic and everything that's going on. And the word valley stuck out into my spirit. And I liken it to what we're going through right now. We're in that dark valley. Perilous darkness is what they call it. But guess what? We have a shepherd in our valley. We have a shepherd in our valley. We're not alone. We're not. Sometimes it feel like it. That's the way I felt when I got frustrated at my job. I'm like, is there anybody else in this place that is a born-again, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled, on fire for God believer? I was drained. I was tired. I was tired and drained. But we have a shepherd in our valley. We've always had a shepherd in our valley. Think about the times when you weren't a believer. You were doing your own thing. Me, personally, with the way I did what I did, the way I acted, the way I used football as my, for the, to glorify me, the way I took advantage of the gift that God gave me that was supposed to be used to glorify him, but I'm glorifying myself in clubs and bars and, 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 and going all over the places and doing all kind of things, and I'm standing here in front of you right now? And that was before I got born again. I, 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 I gotta talk. I'm giving it to you like the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know where this was going. But look at your life. Look back over your life. 
Call to remember the things that you was in. You put yourself in. You did. Now, God, you put yourself in and you hear. And you hear. You hear. You got friends and loved ones and family ones that probably was right beside you and did it. And they may not even be here. But you hear. I can remember spring break. It was, one, it was my first off season from, from Atlanta at that time. My uncle needed to use my truck. I had a full-size a four Bronco. He needed because he was going fishing and needed to tow, to tow his boat. So me, I said, all right, huh? I'll make a fair trade with me. You take my truck, but you got to let me hold your Porsche. <laughs> he was like, all right. When I got behind that wheel, and it's a, it's a two, it was a, they, it's a four lane now, but it was a two lane highway from my hometown to Panama City Beach, which was about 35, 40 minutes from me. I had a buddy of mine that just got a brand new truck. And we're coming back from Panama City after being down there for a week. Been drinking all day. And I get behind the wheel. And only, I don't only get behind the wheel. I got behind the wheel and was running 144 miles an hour on a two-lane highway. Passing cars, I'm going up a hill. I don't know what's coming over the hill, and I'm passing people. Running 144 miles an hour. I was driving so fast, my buddy with his new truck, when he pulled in his yard, it was running hot. It was a brand new truck. The car got so light, the car, the steering wheel, I mean, the whole car got light, and all it would have took is me to do just that, and I wouldn't be standing here before you right now. We got a shepherd in our valley. We got a shepherd in our valley. His plan is way better than our plan. His plan, I see to anybody's plan. You're not here by accident. We're not here right now in these days, in these perilous times, in the last days with all this mess going on. You are not here by accident. You have not thought. You have not survived, you have not struggled, you have not persevered if God didn't have something bigger for you to do in this place. I wanted to quit. I told my wife, I said, I'm done. I said, I'm done. She was like, what you going to do? I don't know, but I'm not going back there. It gets frustrated. It does. It gets frustrated. But it says in Proverbs, lean not to our own understanding. <laughs> lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. That's the key. See, we leave out that, play, that part. We got to acknowledge him. Like Nikki said this morning about people seeing you and watching you. We're, 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 we're the closest thing some people are going to get to read the Bible. We're the closest thing somebody gonna get to see Jesus. Trust me, I'm in a I'm 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 in a place at my job and it's darkness, 24 hours, 365 days a year. Trust me. Trust me, the junk that I hear, the junk that I see, the junk that I got I got to endure. If it had not been for the Lord, <laughs> if it had not been for the Lord, look at your life. Look at it. Look how wonderful 
It may not have been the way you wanted. It may not have been perfect. But look back over your life. Remember, look at the things God has done. Despite all that we've done to him. When I was thinking about quitting, he said, how can you quit on these kids when I never quit on you? How can you quit on these kids when I hadn't quit on you? God got a way of getting our attention at the right time. And he got mine. We have a shepherd in a valley. When Moses, when Moses was on, on the backside of the mountain, he got the sheep and he go and see God. And he's talking through me and, and He's looking at the, the, the bush that's on fire, but it's not being consumed. Hmm. The bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. We're in the fire, but we're not being consumed. <laughs> may feel like it, because it get hot. Them situations get hot. But we're in the fire, but we're not being consumed. But then you get the fire of God on us. You get the, the anointing. And I thought about it. What happens when the fire goes out? That's when the work comes. What happens when the fire goes out? When you're on fire for God, remember when the first time you got, when you got saved, you want to just save everybody. Hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I mean, I'm in Christian. You want to save everybody. What happened to that? Kind of quiet. <laughs> I'm talking to myself, too. I'm not exempt. What happened? What happened to that fire? What happened to that fire? We need it now more than ever. <laughs> Everything that the unbeliever believes in is being pushed in our face. But we mention Jesus, and we the one that's wrong. Everybody's treating wrong, right, and right, wrong. I'm not saying... Be aggressive and all oh, blah 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 hammer people. But like Nikki said this morning during prayer, walk your walk. Let your light shine. Walk your walk and let light shine. It don't take much. Love, forgiveness, patience. Simple little things, but we make them hard. When, when Nikki said this morning to walk and let people see the change God done in you, I've had two teammates, two of them. One is when I played here with, uh, with him with the Firebirds and then and in Grand Rapids. Phone rung, just pulled into work. And he said, Tebow, I need to talk to you. I was like, what's going on? I said, I just got to work. He said, I got to tell you something. He said, it happened a week ago, but I've been, I, I, I got to tell you. I said, what? I said, everything all right? He said, it could have never been better. He said, I got born again a week ago. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. He said, he said, I watched you. I knew what type of guy you was before you changed your life. He said, and I watched. Never, never approached him. Never broke bread with him. 
Never told him he needed to come to God. None of that. He watched me. He watched me. Now just imagine <laughs> he watching me and I go and, and say just be a disgruntled player, just do all kind of dumb stuff. What kind of image would that? Oh, that's the way a Christian's supposed to act? He watched me. But he knew something had changed in me. And he knew what that change that happened to me, I couldn't have done it myself. He saw that. He saw that. So don't think you're not making a difference because you're not saying anything or nobody's coming and asking you about, oh, how do you do this and all that. Walk your walk and let the light of Jesus shine in you and let him do the work. The same way you're sitting here, you either watch somebody or you talk to somebody and that changed your mind. That changed you to say, let me give Jesus a try. I think about, I think about my grandma, two of them. I had one live right next door to me and another one, what we call, we call it cross the branch. It was really cross the railroad track. <laughs> my grandma and Gladys stayed right next door and I used to come home for the off season. And she would wake up, she I ain't the only thing she went to sleep, two o'clock, two a.m. in the morning, knocking on my, my mom's window. Blondie, you better slow him down. Blondie, they gonna drain him. He out here partying every night, drinking and driving up and down this highway. You better slow him down. My mom would tell my grandmother, Ma, I couldn't give him what he wanted when he was a kid. He done made it, it's his money. We used to have to go to Florida, to the Florida line to get alcohol. That, 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 that night, another dark two lane highway country road, coming back on a 35 mile an hour zone, I'm running 75, 80 miles an hour. No street lights, pitch dark. Went by a cop. If I'd have got caught with what I had in that car, in that car, I'd have spent at least two or three years in jail. This is my rookie year in the off season when I'm I'm in the NFL. It's my rookie year in the off season. My rookie year. My rookie year. You would think, oh no, it's my rookie year. All right, let me train. Let me get in shape. Let me do this. Let me go back there and stay at the camp and, and work out. It's all about me. It was all about me. But I had a shepherd in the valley. Even when I didn't know I had a shepherd with me in the valley. My other grandmother, I think she the one gave God a fit about me. Because it never failed. I think you, I've, I've said this before, it never failed. You're going to be the preacher of this family. When I would come home, when I was playing in the World League and Arena Football at this time, she had got real bad Alzheimer's disease. But she knew the preacher of the family when she saw her. That's God. She got Alzheimer's, and she still would say, there's my preacher of the family. When God says something, he means it. When he created us in the beginning, he loved us. He could have he made Adam any other way and woke him up any other way. Listen to me. He could have woke him up any other way. He breathed his breath into man, and man became a living creature. He 
he's God. He could have did that any other way. He could have did that any other way to wake Adam up. He breathed his breath in the man. God is not going to be outdone. Amen. No matter what the news, what everything that's going on, all this mess going on that, that's being pushed in our faith, God is not going to be outdone. God is not going to be outdone. Adam messed up. God said, okay, that plan worked for a little while. I got to send my son. Got to send my son. Jesus. God loves us. God loves us despite everything we do, everything we've done, everything that we thought about doing, everything that we're going to do and ain't thought about doing and going to do and he still loves us. While we were yet in our mother's womb, he loved us. He died for us. Our little sacrifices, the problems we go through, our little struggles, our little hardships, <laughs> we got the answer. God the answer. Nothing compares to what Jesus Christ went through for us on this cross. Nothing. Nothing. But do you think he would have did all that for you to struggle or doubt yourself? I don't think you're worthy. I don't, you don't think you can do what he's asking you to do? Uh-uh. 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 God is strategic in his plans. He knew all of us can't be in one place at, the, at one time. So he's strategically placing us in different areas. Take every opportunity you can. Take every opportunity you can to walk in a way to change somebody's life and bring them to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It ain't got to be overthought about. It ain't got to be overdone. It ain't, can't be, ain't got to be excessive. Just walk your walk. Because each one of us got our own walk. I can't walk your walk, you can't walk my walk, I can't walk your walk, I can't walk your walk, you can't walk my walk. Walk your own walk. Despite everything that they were saying about Jesus, oh, he think he's that. Oh, he's hanging out with, 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 with wine bibbers and tax collectors and, 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 and all these other people. He just kept walking his walk. My second teammate, he called me about a year ago. He said, what's going on? You everything all right? The family, you know, all right? He's like, yeah, everybody good. He said, man, he said, I don't know what I was thinking. I said, what do you mean? He said, man, when I saw the way you were living your life and, and, you know, we was going to Bible study and I was still doing what I was doing, but you was, you know, going home and, and doing what you needed to do. He said, man, I, I, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, man. And I said, what? And he said, Tony, I want to thank you. He said, I want to thank you 
for the way you walked and opened my eyes to see Jesus, who he, who he truly was. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. He did it. He did it. He's a pastor now. One seed, talking about seed, I remember when I got, when I was in the hospital, Pastor Paul told me, he said, Tony, you got a lot of seed out there. That one seed, one in Colorado, one in Nashville, and now how many seeds they going to plant? <laughs> how many seeds they going to plant? This ain't my message, what I wrote down. It's not. The only part of the message is the title. But I felt the anointing two weeks ago so strong. And I said to myself, I said, I'm doing all this study, and I guarantee you, Holy Spirit is going to go and take me a whole different way. And here we are. Ask my wife. I was down in the basement, in my basement, for about four or five hours yesterday. One seed. Now, them the two people that, that actually call and talk to me. But just imagine... the people that I've impacted that I would never know. Just imagine the impact you will make on people you probably never know until we get to heaven. And they come up to you. Thank you for showing me who Jesus Christ is. So what it's all about. This, is, this walk, this is what it's all about. It's about souls. If you ain't got a hunger and a thirst for souls, check yourself before you wreck yourself. I'm, 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 I'm saying this seriously. When I said up here that one day, we don't have time to waste time, we don't have time to waste time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. When you can look back over your life and see the things God has delivered you from, protected you from, guided you from, Them the things that you see. What about the things that you haven't seen that he's guarded you from, from protecting you from? When I went in the hospital and when I had my heart attacks, multiple, I felt like Satan that went and talked to God like he did with Job. I did. I did. And when you said that about Psalm 91 and standing on it, I thought about that same thing with Paul. But what, you, what do you do when you're in the fire and it feels like it's consuming you? Are you still going to stand on God's word? Are you still going to stand on God's word? I'm laying on my back. Thinking I was going to have a, a quick, easy fix. Thought they were just going to go in and put the stents in, and I'd be like, let's go. Day in, day out. <laughs> What do you do when the fire seems to start consuming you when you're in it? What do you do when it feels like the fire is consuming you when you're in it? 
tell you what I did when my wife told me they were going to have to crack this chest open. I started snatching stuff. I'm like, no, ain't nobody cutting my chest open. No. I'm out of here. If I'd have been stubborn and got up out that hospital bed after they couldn't do stents with the blockage that I had in my heart, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. When you got four major arteries, 96% blocked, 94%, and I think the other two was like 90. Four of them. I ate good when I was playing football, that's why. <laughs> But look at that situation with the conversation that the enemy had with, with God about that. Felt like God said, yeah, you can, you can throw all that on him. Just don't kill him. He got more work to do for me. <laughs> he got more work to do for me. got a shepherd in our valley, a good shepherd, a good shepherd. You're not alone. We're not alone. may feel like it sometimes, but we're not alone ever, ever, ever. We're never alone. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. How precious, how precious are we to God? The limitations that he didn't, he, he didn't went above and beyond just for little old us. Just for little old us. Just for little of us. But yet we get frustrated and mad and upset, sad, because somebody rejected us. Because somebody rejected us because what we were trying to give them, they didn't accept. How many times you rejected God before you became a Christian? Believe that alone. Leave that alone. How many times you rejected people coming in and, and, and witnessing to you and you didn't come to Christ? I would go to Bible studies. I would go to Bible studies and the Holy Spirit would move all on, over on me. This is for the games. I'm crying just like I cry now. And get on the field and act and talk like I ain't never heard Nothing about Jesus. You were like, wait a minute, what? You were just crying in Bible study. Now you're out here, you bombing in and, and do all kinds of stuff. That was uh, rejected. But I had a shepherd in the valley. I had a shepherd in the valley. I had a shepherd in the valley watching over. His rod and his staff was comforting me. When I got out there too far, even when I was a sinner, he would pull me back. Hmm. Hmm. Even when we were sinning and we were getting out there too far, he still pulled us back. Woo! What about the green pastures? He maketh. And green pastures, shepherd in the valley. I had a blessing from a childhood dream since I was nine years old. Told my mom I wanted to be a professional football player. 
God gifted me that talent. God gifted me the ability, the drive, the determination. He orchestrated things so I'd be able to get to that point because I had no clue how to get there. Nine-year-old kid with green pastures. And I didn't even know Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he still worked it out. I didn't know about how to go to college. I didn't know how about to get a scholarship. I didn't know how to get recruited. I knew none of that. But I had a shepherd in the valley that gave me green pastures and I knew nothing about. All God is simply saying is, Trust me. Amen. Trust me. When you don't know what to do, when it's ugly, when it's on fire, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. It's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. But that's all God is asking. Is just trust me. You trust in getting in your car, it's going to get you from point A to B. Trust when you sit in one of these chairs, it's going to hold you. you trust you're going to wake up every morning after you go to sleep. And God created all of that. And all he is asking you is to trust me. But we put our trust in so many other things without even batting an eye. But we got a shepherd in our valley. <laughs> we have a shepherd that never sleeps nor slumbers and is always ready. Okay. That's what the Holy Spirit was going to give you. I just want to read it. I'm going to read Psalms 23 in whole and, and, and stop a little places here and there. I'm going to read out the King James. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters and he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not Tony, but his name's sake. I will fear no, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cups runs over. Surely. Everybody says surely. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Simple little prayer from David. Shepherd boy who became a king, who was writing poetry. Poetry. Everybody's writing poetry. He's soft, man. David wasn't soft. He killing lions and scalping people and bringing them out of his mouth. That ain't soft. <laughs> that ain't a soft person. David Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Joseph, Job, just to think of a few. What they endured, what they stood for, how they never wavered. That's why I like reading those stories. I, I'm, I'm, I'll be trying to figure out, wait, man, sorry, they, had, they, had to give, they had to give in something they had to like, well, I don't know. 
But you look, read them. The three Hebrew boys. If God don't save me, but, but if not, what a bold statement. A bold statement in tremendous turmoil. Woo! Job, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. <laughs> what a bold statement. You done lost family, houses, you got sickness and disease all over your body, your friends telling you to curse God, your wife telling you to curse God. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even when David messed up, messed up, he had a shepherd in his valley. Even though he knew what he did, why he was doing it, he still thought into his heart, this is God I done did this to. I got to repent. Got to repent. Those stories, those testimonies, seeing that and seeing what I've went through, can you imagine you being brought to a fire that's been heated seven times hotter and the people that's taking you to the fire and you still walking? <laughs> Seriously, you, you, you going to be thrown in a fire and the people that's taking you to the fire burn up before you get to the fire. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'll be like, wait a minute. But you, if you think about it, okay, if they walk into the fire, if they walk into the fire and they ain't in the fire yet, and the, and the fire consumed the people that was taking them, did they walk on in there by themselves? On their own? Did they make a choice to say, I'm going to show you who my God is, and I'm going to walk in here anyway and come out not even smelling like smoke? Yeah. Woo! Bold. That's bold. I thought about that. When I was reading, I was like, wait a minute. If they got consumed, the people that was with them, how did they end up in the fire anyway? <laughs> how did they end up in the fire anyway? They chose. They made a choice. Okay, God, if this is where I'm at in this place and, and, and this company don't want to do right by the kids that we're dealing with, and don't want to make a stance to, to correct things, I'm going to be here anyway. I'm going to let you do the work. I'm just going to show up and let you have your way. I don't care how hot the fire get, I won't quit. Because that's what the enemy is trying to get us to do. The enemy is trying to quiet the church, people. The enemy is trying to quiet the church. And some of us have gotten quiet. When people can be so strong in their belief of what they believe in, why we can't be as, as Christians? Why? We have no reason, no reason not to trust God if we really understand everything that he's done and still doing. God would not be outdone. We got to be bold in our walk. Stop, being, stop walking around with our head down, being disgusted or, or down or depressed. Get your head up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, dwells on the inside of each and every one of us. You understand me? They see in this little, little, little frail dust body 
but on the inside of us is a mighty, mighty warrior. Don't come, don't, don't come, don't go to your job. Oh, I don't know if I want to be here today. No, excuse me, I don't know where I'm here. Oh, here we go again with this guy. <laughs> What kid did what today? I don't want to mess with him today. No. God never runs from a fight. <laughs> God would never run from a fight. So we shouldn't either. The battle is not ours anyway. It's his. It's his. When you're in a position where you feel like everything is overwhelming, take a step back. Take a step back. And say, Holy Spirit, what would you have me to do right now? We got to lean on the Holy Spirit more than ever right now. More than ever right now. Don't try and do things in your own strength. It won't work. It may work for a little while. Then when it don't work, now you're all mad again. Got to start all over back over again when you could have went to the Holy Spirit and it had been done. Trust God. Trust God. He loves you and I. We're the apple of his eye. The same way you love your kids. The same way you want to be, you want to be there for your kids. The same way you want the best for your kids. That's our God. It's Daddy. It's Abba. Trust Him. Trust Him. Amen. When God created you and I, we were born with everything we need to fulfill our assignment. And our gifts were built in by God. Every assignment he gives, he gives us, we already get equipped for it. The harder the battle, the more glorious the triumph. That is the cross. It's always an answer in the word of God for every difficult hardship, battle, and problem. There's something in the world that God put here for you to do and only you to do. Nobody else can do it. I like this. It says there's 3,000 promises in the word of God. I say there's all promises are in the word of God. Psalms 27 Let's start at verse 11. It says, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a plan, an even path, because of my enemy, those who lie in wait for me. Give me up not toward the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me. They breathe out cruelty and violence. What? Listen at verse 13. What would have become of me had not I believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? 14, wait, hope for, and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage. And let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for, hope for, and expect the Lord. The promises of God are yes and amen. Yes and amen. Wait. Things ain't going to happen in our time. Wait on God. He will renew our strength. Hope for. Our hope is in God. 
believe. Believe and expect. Always have a spirit of expectancy that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Amen? Amen? Amen.